This is the Software and Technology Podcast, your B2B show for the best thought leadership in the industry, bringing you information, education, and inspiration, only on MarketScale. The more diversity of thought of the people working at tech companies, the better. The blockchain idea was around 91, the same idea of in the digital world, we need verifiable documents. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast today. I'm Tyler Kern. Thanks so much for joining me for this episode of the show. Today, we're discussing the impact that 5G will have on factory automation and where we're at at this current moment in time. We'll also talk some applications for 5G in the future. And joining me to provide his expertise and insight on this topic today is Barry Turner. He's the Technical Business Development Manager at Red Lion Controls. Barry, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Well, it's good to have you back on the show, Barry, and uh, and get your insights once again. And so l- let's start off here, just as we as we kind of discuss 5G as the broad topic for today's episode of the show. Uh, tell us how wireless communication in the industrial space has evolved to where we are today. Give us a timeline of, uh, of events there. Sure. That's a, that's a great question. So, so wireless uh, technology has been in the industrial space for quite some time, uh, you know, up to 15 to 20 years. Uh, where uh, our customers have been using that technology to send things like a couple of I.O. points, uh, whether it be flow or tank levels or something like that, but using a, a low bandwidth wireless technology that can go a long distance. And so that's, and that goes back a long time, uh, like I said, 15 years or so. In those applications, the uh, frequency that was used was 900 megahertz in most of those applications. And so 900 megahertz is a great uh, frequency to use for these types of applications uh, because these applications are low in bandwidth need, but they have usually a long distance uh, in communication need as well. And so 900 megahertz works really well uh, to answer those two needs uh, in that uh, at 900 megahertz, you can send a small amount of data Uh, but you can go a long distance. And so uh, when you're talking about wireless technology, you're looking at frequencies and the higher the frequencies, the more power, Uh, the more power you send out means more data, Uh, but the more power you send out and the more data, it means the less amount of uh, distance you can travel before it uh, dissipates or attenuates. And so uh, the 900 megahertz um, was great uh, early on because it allowed them to send a small amount of data over a long distance. But eventually those networks clapped down to an Ethernet network uh, where much more bandwidth was required. And so if you go back roughly about 10 years ago or so, uh, then you see the uh, industrial space make a change from 900 megahertz wireless telemetry systems to move into more of what uh, is used in the commercial space. The 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz uh, were used uh, by many of our customers. And so those were used to replace those existing 900 megahertz systems now that their networks, their controls networks were being collapsed down to um, uh, to Ethernet networks. And so they were using Ethernet type uh, wireless communication, uh, 802.11a, b, and g, and n were those that were used back in the day. <clears throat> and the reason they went to that is because the applications themselves had a new requirement. Uh, mm-hmm. The new requirement was that they needed more bandwidth. And so, and they also needed better access into those. And so at the very beginning of this, if you go back to 15, 20 years ago, you really just needed to get a data point uh, to uh, some localized point to kind of monitor and get notification if something were to go go wrong. So maybe a flow rate or maybe a, a tank volume, something like that, but you needed to see something that may be at a remote site, but you didn't necessarily need remote access into that site. So that all changed as the, as the applications got more complex. And now remote access is almost you know uh, a necessity at, at every application. And so when you're talking about remote access, now you need more uh, bandwidth. So you need uh, a way to be able to communicate with uh, a system over a secure tunnel. And so you're going to need more bandwidth to, to make that happen. 900 megahertz is going to make that very difficult. So you need a, a higher amount of bandwidth for that, as well as pull in data out of these remote applications too. And so many of our customers uh, see the benefit in taking that data that's at that remote site, pulling it out, out of the remote site and be able to visualize that somewhere. Uh, having uh, more data coming out of more devices means you need uh, more bandwidth and move into uh, the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz. So the higher frequencies um, allowed our customers to get to where they had more bandwidth for the wireless telemetry systems using 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. But again, remember, 
I said that the um, the higher the frequency, the less distance you can go. So you can get more bandwidth, which is what they were needing, but they had the less distance that that uh, amount of traffic could uh, traverse or go. And so they had to put more radios into uh, their telemetry system. So instead of having one every couple of miles, now you're talking about maybe four uh, once a mile or something like that, where you have more radios because they don't have, um, you, the frequency goes up and so you're able to send more data, but you're able to send it at a, a shorter distance. And so you have to have more radios. And so you can imagine where that ended up uh, putting a, a lot of strain on putting more and more uh, infrastructure up to support these new radio systems. Uh, you get more bandwidth, but there's more required in terms of putting them out there simply because they don't cover the same amount of area. And so that's that's really the evolution. So we started at uh, you know, a low bandwidth and a long distance, and then uh, something that would you know go through um, you know, all kinds of materials uh, to move into something that's used in the commercial space today, like the 2.4 and, and 5 gigahertz uh, frequencies. And now when we talk about 5G, 5G, we're moving even further up in the frequencies um, to extend that, uh, that problem that we we're just talking about even a little bit more. So that's really the, um, the history there is starting from a uh, low frequency, um, low bandwidth protocol, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, communication protocol mm -hmm. that would allow us to send uh, traffic. We move from there to a, a technology that would allow us to spend more or send more data and more bandwidth, uh, but we have less distance. And now we're moving up yet again or looking to move up yet again in the future to 5G, where the frequency uh, is going to uh, increase yet again. And so we'll lose more uh, distance that we have. And so you can imagine we're going to have more and more uh, wireless base stations everywhere. Right. So, so customers will need to have probably additional in-building cellular base stations as a result. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and um, I, I am confident that that will happen. I, I am also confident that 5G in the future will eventually replace or at least work side by side with existing Wi-Fi. And so I don't, I'm not sure if it means that customers will have um, a base station that they lease through a carrier or if they will end up owning their own uh, and deploy them much like they deploy a wireless system today which is kind of the way I'm leaning. Right. That makes a lot of sense. So what what positive things do you think 5G will bring to factory automation? What do you think that this looks like as 5G reaches maturity? Uh, what, what positive effects will it bring? So this is really an exciting time. Um, and so to me, what 5G will really bring is really uh, a conclusion to the convergence and confluence between IT and OT. And so this has been going on for years uh, where uh, the IT and OT have blended together um, and become one, and that's it's more and more. The 5G really, I think, uh, is going to uh, end, end that, and it'll, it'll be one team at that point. Uh, and then you get a lot of benefits out of that. And so you get um, a network that has and has full alignment with the security policies of the IT department. Once you're working uh, together with the same uh, business outcome uh, and objectives, then you can have a better, more efficient, more secure network. And so, uh, and then once we're moving to 5G and we have more of a holistic, bigger uh, picture network, uh, we can you know leverage a lot of the, the things that are really working on the, on the IT side, like microservices on the plant floor. That that'll be uh, a real big uh, help uh, to uh, maintain high availability and reliability on the plant floor. So uh, it's really going to change the communication path. Uh, and that it's going to marry together the IT and the OT. So, Barry, let, let's talk applications then and, and what this looks like, it's specifically for, for people that work with redline control. So what do what what, are, what 5G applications are, are out there right now? And what do you anticipate there being in the future? Yeah, so um, there will be uh, a lot of uh, 5G applications in the future. It's going to be a ways out. Um, and the reason being is because um, there, there are a few applications that require the uh, massive one gig bandwidth requirement that 5G offers. And so, uh, and then two, you, to get that uh, benefit, you would end up having to be really close to a base uh, station or you'd have to have one on premise. And so uh, those may be short to come by in the near future. So for that reason, I say it's going to be a while before 5G opportunities or, or applications are out there. Um, but when customers are looking at um, applications that require much more bandwidth than what they have today, that's really where 5G is going to come and shine. 
because of the new technology enhancements with 5G, uh, because of the, of the use of the upper band, uh, the mid band and the lower, um, it's going to perform better, um, uh, you know, in these specific, uh, you know, topologies uh, and, you know, that you're close enough to a base station. Uh, it's going to be great. When you look at, you know, what uh, 5G has to offer outside of that, um, it's really exciting, too. So it's, it's not just your uh, wireless communication. Uh, it's it's more and with the IT connection and connectivity pieces, like I mentioned earlier, like with the microservices. And so there's a lot of new things that uh, that we haven't really thought about uh, that we could do uh, in terms of offering a reliable service on the platform that we'll be able to do with uh, once 5G is fully realized. So it sounds like, Barry, you know, we, we hear a lot of hype about 5G and we, we've heard a lot about the, the promise of what it will bring and how it will revolutionize things. But it sounds like you're saying that, that in terms of practical applications today, there aren't many, but in the future, there will be. And that it, it's kind of a waiting game to make sure that this reaches full maturity before we fully dive in and, and are ready to go. And, and this kind of revolutionizes things the way it's been promised. Yeah, yeah, that, I think that's a, that's a great uh, point to make right there is that I, I do believe the 5G is the future. I, I think we're just a little early on that future. Uh, so 5G is future state technology, and we're just not quite at that future state today uh, to realize it. And like I said, uh, some of the limiting factors is that bandwidth, um, you know, promise that, that uh, 5G uh, offers us and promises with, you know, ultra fast, low latency. You're going to have to be really close to the tower, or really close to a base station. It's going to take some time for uh, service providers uh, or other third parties to roll those base stations out before you're able to see that and get that. And so uh, we will eventually get there. We're just a little early in this uh, future state technology. Makes a lot of sense. We're we're a lot like the uh, the girl from Willy Wonka. You know, we just we just want it now. Uh, we, we want it <laughs> now. <true>. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. that that's how we approach a lot of these things. But yeah. uh, but I, I think what you're saying makes a lot of sense. So Barry, as we start to wrap up this episode, I want to toss it over to you just to give any final thoughts, any conclusions, or any summary statements you want to make, uh, just to leave our audience with uh, here today. So l- let me toss it over to you for any kind of uh, final thoughts, anything we've missed, or uh, or just a summary statement you'd like to leave people with here today. Yeah, I think uh, I would just like to add on to that last statement that I um, mentioned, which is that, um, you know, the 5G technology is very exciting. It offers a lot. It has a lot of potential there. Uh, we are really early on, on being able to realize those uh, benefits that it has to offer. Uh, I have no doubt that we'll get there. I have no doubt that this is the technology and, and where we are heading um, as technology and IT and OT together. Uh, I am also excited uh, to see this happen because, like I said, uh, I've been doing the uh, OT side of this for 10 years, the IT side 10 years before that, or roughly a little more than that. Um, and so to see the two come together uh, with a better service for um, just technology in general is is a great way to go. And so I do I really like seeing uh, the OT side of this come together and realize some of the same security policies that are used in the um, in the IT side. And so uh, 5G is going to make um, a better, uh, more robust and more scalable network possible. Excellent stuff. Barry Turner, Technical Business Development Manager at Redline Controls. Barry, thanks for joining us as always and sharing your leadership and your uh, your expertise on these topics. We appreciate it, man. You bet. Glad to be here. Absolutely. And everyone, thank you for tuning in and uh, learning more with us today about 5G and learning from the, the expertise that uh, that Barry shared with us here today. Of course, stay up to date with the latest from Red Lion and the, the kind of leadership and uh, and expertise that Barry provided here on the podcast. You can always visit redlion.net for more on everything that they provide and, uh, and the different products that they have available and stay up to date with further episodes of the podcast. Stay tuned for more. We'll be back very soon. But for my guest today, Barry Turner, I've been your host, Tyler Kern. Thanks for joining us.